Welcome to the Nebraska Department of Education's Making It Stick Professional Development Webinar Series. I'm Dr. Michael Quinn, and I'll be your host for Module 4, Close Reading. Have you ever wondered how students become critical readers? Or how you can help them become critical readers? Today, we'll show you. The Core Instructional Model Webinar will take 35 minutes. Throughout this module, we built in some learner engagement activities to ensure your comprehension. When you see the pencil icon, you'll be asked to pause, reflect, engage, and write in your viewing guide. Feel free to stop, start, and rewind as needed. After you complete the module, we'll ask you a few quick questions to see if we've helped you meet the lesson's objectives. Let's get started. Here's our umbrella question for today. How does close reading help students become critical readers and interpreters of text? Because we always want to reflect and improve upon our own processes, we'll explore the following strategies. First, we will reflect on your process for reading and analyzing text. Next, we will explore the elements of complex text. Then, we will learn the process for engaging students in the close reading of complex texts. After that, we will learn how to craft text-dependent questions. Finally, we will plan for close reading in the classroom and help students to become critical readers and interpreters of text. Either by yourself or in a group, Let's take some time to reflect on your own experience as a student. Consider the following questions. How were you taught to analyze, discuss, and take notes on text when you were in school? Did your approach to reading and annotating text change as you advanced through high school? If so, how and why? For example, how did your note taking become more independent as you advanced through high school? Please pause the video for a moment and write down your answers to the questions in your viewing guide. Press play when you're ready to resume. Our goal as teachers is to provide students with the tools that will allow them to construct meaning by applying prior knowledge, using text information, and monitoring comprehension while reading increasingly complex grade level literary and informational texts. Close reading is one strategy that can be used to help students master these skills and become analytic readers. In order to help students become critical readers and interpreters of text, we need a common vocabulary. Take a look at these three terms. Close reading, complex text, text-dependent questions. Let's define our three terms. If you're viewing as a staff or PLC, feel free to pause the video to create common or shared definitions with your colleagues. Push play when you're ready to resume. Did your shared definitions address comprehension and retention for close reading? Analysis for complex texts? Making connections for text-dependent questions? So what exactly is close reading? Dr. Tim Shanahan, director of the Center for Literacy at the University of Illinois, has a definition that is simple to understand, but also conveys the complexity that is close reading. He says that close reading is an intensive analysis of a text in order to come to terms with what it says, how it says it, and what it means. Approaching reading with a critical eye and mind helps students understand an idea in all its complexity, nuance, and depth. We are often focused on what the teacher is doing. How can we tell if students are processing the big ideas presented in our text? Which questions about the text can we ask? If you're viewing as a staff or PLC and you'd like to continue your discussion looking through the student lens, please pause the video and press play when you're ready to resume. Close reading is a tool we can give our students to help them address complex texts with confidence so they can uncover layers of meaning that lead to deeper comprehension. 
Close reading gives students the opportunity to look at varying text meanings based on different elements like central ideas and supporting details, vocabulary, author's technique, and purpose. In other words, close reading means first viewing text close up, then stepping back and re-examining the text's larger meaning. Close reading uses shorter text, requires multiple readings, and focuses on analysis and discussion. Through close reading, we're able to reduce the complexity of the text and dive deeper into both context and the author's purpose. We may disagree, but as long as we're thinking critically, we'll all benefit from the close reading process. At the beginning of the webinar, you took a few minutes to discuss and define complex text. Before we explore close reading step by step, let's examine the elements of text complexity. The relationships between ideas and informational texts, or between characters in literary fiction, have become less basic and straightforward. Readers increasingly have to identify relationships that are implicit, sometimes subtle, more involved, and deeply embedded in the message. Consequently, complex texts place a greater load on readers' abilities to make inferences and construct a meaning that may be unclearly or directly stated. As texts grow in complexity, more depth of background detail and conceptual information is provided. Readers have to navigate considerable and sometimes highly sophisticated material to construct an understanding. Complex texts also exhibit higher intertextuality, which requires readers to meaningfully connect to references and allusions to other texts or knowledge. Finally, complex texts are likely to be lengthy and demand readers to discern essential ideas from supporting details. The way information and ideas are organized becomes more elaborate in complex texts. A central facet of comprehension of complex texts is awareness of text structure and the ability to track how authors develop explanations, arguments, and ideas. Additionally, more than one single idea between ideas might be present. Literary texts may adopt less straightforward methods of narration. Complex texts feature more intricate writing styles. Readers will encounter fewer simple sentences and more elaborate sentence structures. They will need to track connective language, words like but, however, therefore, such as, and consequently, and analyze grammatical structure. Readers must be sensitive to the author's tone and notice how the author's use of language and word choice influences understanding of text. For example, language may be figurative or ironic in tone, requiring students to identify various levels of meaning. Also, writing styles may be different than contemporary or familiar conventions. With complex texts comes an increase in challenging vocabulary. Complex texts strive for more precision and clarity in use of language and less conversational talk. Readers can expect to encounter unfamiliar words with greater frequency, especially highly technical disciplinary language. Students will be asked to read words that they will rarely see outside of the context of the discipline. Complex text may mandate that readers infer the author's purpose for writing a text, some of which may be clearly articulated and others may be more ambiguous. There may be multiple purposes and some may be unstated. Ultimately, readers must be able to answer the question, why did the author choose to write this? Either by yourself or in a group, let's take some time to reflect on text currently taught in your grade level or content area. Consider the following questions. 
which meet the criteria of a complex text, which are complex enough to warrant repeated reading and detailed examination. Then, consider your students. Which elements of complex text pose the biggest challenge for them? Please pause the video for a moment and write down your answers to the questions in your viewing guide. Press play when you're ready to resume. Have you ever noticed that we're more drawn to complex texts and characters? Why do you suppose that is? Perhaps it's because each time we read the same complex text, we walk away with something different. Next, we begin to detail the close reading process. So now that we've explored the individual pieces of close reading, let's put them all together. How does one conduct close reading? There are many ways, but today we'll learn one process for close reading that you can all share and work with at any grade level and in any subject. Close reading goes beyond the ELA classroom. This process can be applied broadly and can be used in cross-disciplinary ways. Keep in mind that close reading is one of many processes used for digging deeply into a text. It would be exhausting for students to apply close reading to longer texts, a novel, or an entire textbook chapter. Close reading gives you the opportunity to slow down and dig deep, and as such, it works best on short pieces of complex text that are truly worthy of investigation and exploration. At the beginning of the webinar, I asked you to reflect on your own process and experience for close analytical reading. Now, please spend a few minutes putting your process into practice while reading the excerpt from Chapter 1 of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in your viewing guide. Press play when you're ready to resume. Either by yourself or in a group, let's take some time to reflect on your close reading experience. Consider the following question. What did close reading mean to you when you read the excerpt from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland? Please pause the video for a moment and write down your answers to the questions in your viewing guide. Press play when you're ready to resume. So how do you go about doing a close reading? Although the process is complex, the steps are fairly straightforward. Because close reading is used for investigation, it's important to set a clear purpose for reading before having students dig in. In this exercise, they're reading to figure out something. Posing a question for students, a big, interesting question, engages students' attention and helps them read the selected text with a clear goal in mind. This question needs to be more complex. Rarely do we see traditional reading comprehension activities on standardized tests. We, as teachers, need to go beyond pinpointing important facts. The question you pose should be challenging and intriguing and something that requires thought and investigation to figure out. In the next few slides, we'll explain close reading step-by-step -step structure. First reading, to second reading, to note-taking. The third important piece of this step is to select a short passage for investigation. You don't need to do close reading with every passage. In fact, it would be exhausting for you and your students. Pick a short, compelling section, something worthy of deeper digging. Here are three examples of overarching text-based questions we can ask before engaging new text. How does Walt Whitman portray the average American in 1846 within the poem, I Hear America Singing? How do Gandhi's actions complement his famous quote, Be the change you wish to see in the world? How is Lyndon Johnson's Great Society still impacting politics today? As you may have noticed, each question provides students with a purpose or lens through which to read and analyze the text. Once students know why they're reading, the process, and have been given their text, have them do an initial read-through. Let them know that they will be reading this text at least twice, so they will have more than one chance to get everything. The first time, you want them to get a general, big-picture understanding of the text, with a focus on several questions like the ones given here. 
Take a minute to read each question. Depending on the text, you may want to do this first pass as a read aloud so that students can simply listen. You can have students jot down notes at this stage, or you may wish to have students simply read and absorb. For very young students, you may wish to read the text aloud for the first read-through and the second read-through, depending on their skill level. Close reading is about a larger conceptual understanding. If students are still in the decoding stage, then close reading isn't your top priority. This first read is often called reading for flow. Now, it's a good time to reread the text and start digging into it in detail. Students should have a good, general understanding of the text after the first pass. Now it's time to pursue the big question you pose for them by asking smaller, bite-sized questions. The questions listed here are simply options and can be used at different times for different texts. They're simply suggestions of the kinds of things students should be looking for and thinking about as they engage in the second reading, always with an eye toward the big question that's been set for them. Some authors and researchers advocate having students annotate and mark up the text directly in their books. You may want to do that, or you may feel the need to keep school copies of the text clean. The three-column note-taking structure we're going to outline next will provide you with a way for students to annotate text without marking up the text directly. Either way, the key is for students to physically interact with the text. Three-column note-taking can help students be purposeful and on task when taking notes instead of wondering what might be worth writing down. We've all seen students who try to write down everything you say, and others who leave their notebooks completely blank. This process gives students particular places on the page to focus their note-taking. Have students draw vertical lines and divide their pages into three columns before the exercise begins. For younger students, you may want to design and give them a graphic organizer. The first column is for direct quotations from the text. Students should copy down word for word any words, phrases, or sentences they find interesting, curious, or important in relation to the big question at hand. In the second column, students jot down some notes about that quote, what they think it means or demonstrates, why it's interesting or intriguing, how it provides evidence of some particular idea. In the third column, students engage directly with the text or the author, asking their own questions. Why did this character act that way? Why did the author use that turn of phrase? What does this argument mean? These are questions that students may want to pose to you in a later discussion, or simply ponder on their own. These notes exist for the students and can be written as incomplete sentences or even just words. Abbreviations, pictures, diagrams, and symbols are all perfectly appropriate as long as the student understands and can explain or present their choices. This last column in particular is something you may want to model for your students. Working through a passage of text and thinking out loud for them so that they can see what it means to enhance text by writing their own questions. For early readers, struggling readers, or ELL students, you might want to hand out a graphic organizer and pre-populate the quotes column with words, phrases, and sentences that you want students to think about. You can populate this column in its entirety or simply provide a handful of examples to get students started. Having different versions of this graphic organizer built with different levels of scaffolding is a nice way to provide differentiation of instruction. For non-readers and early writers, you could even use images in the quotes column, either pictures taken directly from the book they're reading or other images representative of some part of the text. In the second column, early writers can write individual words or draw pictures. Another differentiation tip, you can have students discuss the text in pairs while reading in order to populate the third column. If you have an aide in the classroom, he or she can help transcribe student discussions in cases of very early or non-writers. Now that students have worked through the text and completed their graphic organizer, it's time to get them to share their notes in an open discussion. 
Teachers may wish to attack the larger question and hint at the purpose right away, using it to drill down to the details. Or they may prefer to work from more detailed, text-dependent questions up to the big picture question. Whole class discussions allow the teacher to guide the conversation more directly, asking pointed questions and helping students explicitly reference their notes. Small group or pair discussions may make more sense in cases where students are working more independently and require less guidance. Keep in mind that the purpose of text-dependent questions is to prompt rereading, encourage the use of textual evidence to support answers, and deepen comprehension using the analytical process. To aid in this analysis, initial questions will be designed to highlight the explicit meaning of the text. However, it is important to go beyond and progress toward a more challenging and implicit meaning. You can answer text-dependent questions without any required background knowledge. Stores of background knowledge can be added to by collecting the evidence from the text to further build knowledge, or can be tapped into to make meaning of the text. Questions that involve analysis, synthesis, and evaluation actually point towards the most difficult parts of the text. Literal questions do not. Text-dependent questions will drive the reading standards in the classroom if questions are asked about words, sentences, paragraphs, big ideas, themes, relationships, etc. Text-dependent questions are an opportunity to address the academic vocabulary and syntax that are features of complex texts, the features that make text difficult for students. What does all this mean for our students? It means that complex questions actually make students stronger and more capable readers. Here are some examples of text-dependent and beyond text questions. Which questions do you think will more rapidly engage students? In your viewing guide, you will find the same six questions. Notice that they are bundled together. First text-dependent, then beyond. Read each question again. Now write one more beyond text question. How will you further engage your students? Mark your response in the space below each question. If you have time, jot down some potential student answers too. How will your students answer your new beyond question? Pause the video for a few minutes to work on this activity, then resume when you are ready. Asking questions that require students to have read and understand text is crucial. It is important that as teachers we know how to engage students beyond simply asking them to tell a personal story. The content itself can and should be used to engage. There are several ways to structure questions so that students return to the text to find evidence for their responses. These questions go beyond simple recall. Place emphasis on getting students to use explicit and implicit information from the text to support their reasoning. There are at least six categories of text-dependent questions that can be drawn from and structured into a progression that will move students from understanding explicit meaning to understanding implicit meaning, and from working at the sentence level to working across an entire text and even multiple texts. Additionally, some of these question types may be mismatched for a particular reading. There is no requirement that all of these types need to be used with every piece of text. As students discuss a given text, they will likely cover many of the questions that could have been asked. In this case, a prepared question is unnecessary. Think of the prepared text-dependent questions as a resource you have to scaffold students' understanding with the hope that much of the classroom conversation addresses the content of the question. Let's pause here to draft a few text-dependent questions. Either by yourself or in a group, draft three text-dependent questions that may be used when reading the excerpt from Chapter 1 of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. One question will address general understandings, one vocabulary and text structure, and at least one inference. There are three sample questions to help guide your thinking and space for you to write in the viewing guide. Once you have finished drafting your questions, review and share. When we talk about text-dependent questions and text-based answers, 
These are the kinds of things we mean. We want students to interact with text in deep ways, to pull text apart, examine it, understand how each piece works. Remember the idea is to start close and later zoom out for a broader look. As facilitators, we need to constantly ask for evidence. Where do you see that in the text? What page? What paragraph? Students should always be able to justify their responses. The final step of the close reading process is to get students to write. Having had the support of detailed annotation and note taking, followed by group or class discussion, students are in a perfect, confident position to address the overarching, big picture question in a paragraph or two. Students can connect their ideas and positions to real evidence from the text, using their notes to quote directly from the text and explain the importance and meaning of that text. As students become more proficient at close reading, teachers may decide to spend less time in class discussions and move students directly into the independent writing stage. Either by yourself or in a group, consider the following questions. How will you incorporate close reading strategies into your instruction? Imagine that you're teaching a lesson that you've taught previously with the same text. Because close reading is about discovery, what will your students discover about the same text that your previous students may have not? What will they discover about themselves? And finally, which three texts that you currently use can be enhanced by close reading? Which three texts using close reading will benefit students most? Please pause the video for a moment and write down your answers to the questions in your viewing guide. Press play when you're finished. That brings us to the end of our webinar. Please take a moment to fill out our brief survey by visiting the link provided. Thank you for learning with us today.